Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New Budget, New Opportunities, Federal and Provincial Grant Funding Opportunities for 2021, put on today by Fair Grant Writing. Um, I feel that today we're going to have a very insightful um, presentation, which is going to be put on, led by our principal, Igor Chagrin, principal of Fair Grant Writing, who's going to tell us a lot about what opportunities there are for you in terms of being able to get grant funding for your clients to be able to purchase from you and for you to be able to use to forward your own business's goals. All right. And with that, I'm going to hand off to Igor Shigrin. Igor, thank you. Okay, sir. So let me just fire uh, up my presentation. Should be this one. Yep. Here we go. Can anybody confirm that you see the presentation? You're on screen. Super. Okay. So uh, this is the rare opportunity uh, uh, for all of us to meet to discuss uh, the new, uh, some kind of new programs, new things. Uh, usually we keep uh, in touch with uh, our clientele via newsletters where we uh, typically write about some updates, uh, some changes of the existing programs, but uh, I like uh, this time of the year because uh, all, um, uh, all, all provinces and territories um, uh, in Canada uh, and the federal uh, federal uh, government uh, launch uh, their budgets. Uh, last year was a, was a big exception, and of course everybody knows why. Uh, last year there were pretty much no budget at all. Uh, I'm surprised how we got here, but anyways, uh, this this year uh, things are getting back to normal in many areas of the life, uh, including the budgetary process. So all levels of government uh, in Canada. Uh, came up with their budgets, uh, and uh, I'm happy to share with you some of the updates. Uh, of course, uh, I, I will not be able. I will not be able to share with you all the updates because uh, it, it, we would have <laughs> to meet, you know, and we'll have to be on this webinar until uh, you know Friday, Friday night. Uh, but anyways, I, I just uh, focused on you know, certain new programs for uh, businesses for-profit businesses, because this is our audience. We work uh, uh, with um, uh, for-profit businesses writing their uh, grant uh, you know, loan and tax credit applications, um, everything related to the government funding. So um, let me just uh, uh, go through the agenda. Um, and uh, we'll uh, quickly talk about, um, I'll just remind you what fair grant writing is, especially for those who uh, first uh, time join uh, our webinars. And I'll uh, give you a quick overview of what different types of government funding available for you. Uh, we'll go through then through uh, the purposes of the funding and you will know what uh, you can get the government funding for. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, Ontario uh, budget updates and highlights. Uh, I know there are some uh, people joined who are not from Ontario. Uh, just be patient a little bit. Uh, we'll go through Ontario budget updates quickly. Uh, there's not too, too many programs. Uh, there, uh, most of the programs are actually uh, in the federal budget. So no matter where you are uh, in Canada, you, you will be able to apply to, 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 to those programs. And we'll conclude with Q&A. Uh, and just a reminder, please uh, send your questions uh, through the chat function and we'll <clears throat> address them at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, we'll also have some fun today. Um, hopefully it won't be a very boring session for you with just listing the updates. So let me just quickly remind you about uh, Fair Grant Writing, the company that I proudly own. Uh, we are on a mission to help uh, Canadian businesses survive and thrive by unlocking their access to the government funding. Uh, we really want to see uh, Canadian businesses growing and developing. That's why uh, I proudly launched this company in 2013. Uh, since then, we've been fortunate um, to secure millions of dollars to our uh, clients uh, to support uh, their uh, productivity improvement initiatives, uh, their expansion initiatives, their marketing initiatives, and many other uh, good causes that resulted in either uh, you know, improvement in, uh, in, in their sales uh, or uh, job creation or both. Um, we employ top-level technical and business writers, and uh, our process is so nimble that it takes the minimum amount of time uh, from the client to work with us. But enough talking about us, let's talk about the government funding. Uh, I'm just going to remind uh, and explain uh, folks uh, uh, the different types of the uh, government funding programs. Uh, uh, we don't call this area government grants because 
these are not just government grants. In fact, government grants is just one type of the government funding you can get. And it's an unrepayable funding that everybody likes because it's kind of free money that you don't have to pay back. Uh, but on top of that, um, you also can get um, government loans. And they could be interest-free. And most of them are interest-free if you get a loan directly from the government. Uh, but also uh, there are uh, certain government guaranteed programs. I will touch upon them uh, later on during the presentation. Uh, that means you still have to pay uh, the interest to the financial institution, but the loan, the loan will be either fully or, or partially guaranteed by, by the government. Uh, now, there are also tax credits. <clears throat> the difference between uh, the grants and tax credits is just is is that um, you have to apply uh, for the government grant uh, or loan before your project starts and get the approval before it, it starts, and uh, you apply for the tax credit after your project ends or most common case after your fiscal year uh, fiscal year ends. Uh, on top of that, there are currently temporary COVID related incentives. Uh, it's a combination of grants, loans, uh, government procurement programs tax credits and other solutions uh, that, that are here to help uh, businesses in Canada to uh, stay afloat uh, while this pandemic is still uh, pretty serious uh, around the country. A couple of success stories of our clients that uh, we're very proud of, uh, secured, uh, we secured uh, $3 million in the federal interest-free funding for our aerospace client uh, in Vaughan, Ontario. Uh, and over 300,000 in government uh, grants, non-repayable grants, uh, to a metal fabrication client in Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, work with uh, uh, companies all across the sectors, uh, but primarily in technology, manufacturing, and um, agri-food uh, businesses, agri-food industries. Uh, this is another story that I like uh, because, first of all, it's very recent, uh, and. Secondly, because of the amount of funding, of the amount of government funding that this particular uh, Manitoba company secured. Uh, unfortunately, it's not our client. Uh, otherwise, I would have retired by now. But, <laughs> but, but uh, um, the reason I'm bringing this slide up is because I wanted to highlight uh, that there's no real limit or cap uh, as to how much government money your business can get. As long as you have a good purpose and you have a good scale, uh, you can get up to this number and probably a little bit more. Uh, regarding the purposes of the funding, um, this is typically what the government funds, uh, equipment purchasing upgrade or productivity improvement, skills training, hiring, uh, developing your export uh, or your export marketing software hardware implementation, a research and development, which is by far the largest uh, uh, recipient of the government funding, and a business expansion, such as uh, construction or expansion of the plant. Uh, the government does not provide any operational funding. Uh, there's just one exception. These days, uh, one of the uh, COVID-related um, uh, loan, government loan, actually does provide uh, the operational funding but uh, it's a temporary measure. So normally, you know, normally the government doesn't care about any your operational expenses. So uh, let's go through the uh, Ontario budget updates. Just a reminder to those who are not uh, from Ontario on this call, uh, be patient, we'll go through this shortly. Um, and also we'll be happy to uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one session with you to go through uh, the budget update um, uh, in, your, uh, in your province because we get all, all of those updates anyway. Uh, but uh, so just bear with us if you're not from Ontario and if you are from Ontario, please be attentive. So let's start with emergency measures. Uh, there are uh, two grants that existed in Ontario uh, before this fiscal year started, uh, before this budget was stabled. Ontario Small Business Support Grant uh, that was available for selected types of businesses that were hit hard by the pandemic, typically restaurants, bars, uh, small retail stores. Uh, so the provincial government allocated up to $20,000 uh, for each establishment. Uh, now, what's new in the budget is that uh, they said that everyone who have applied for the program and who have been approved will get a top up equals to the same amount of money that they have been approved in the first place. So that means if you are, say, a small restaurant, 
uh, and you've got twenty thousand uh, dollars. Uh, you applied last fiscal year, which is before April first. Uh, you've got twenty thousand. Then you should expect another twenty thousand sometime this spring. I mean, good for you if that's the case. Um, now, on top of that, Ontario uh, government launched a new uh, subsidy, emergency subsidy for uh, the tourism and hospitality industry. Um, attention to everyone who is in this uh, hospitality business, which is also hit hard. Uh, the details of the program will be available shortly. Uh, however, we already know that the maximum amount of funding uh, through this program will be 20,000. Uh, now, on top of that, there will be some new funding for small distilleries. Uh, again, uh, the amounts will be determined later. Um, I think it will be also around 20,000 because it's kind of a number that uh, the provincial government used a lot uh, in the past few uh, months, but that's what uh, I think it will be. Um, anyways, uh, another opportunity is a Digital Main Street grant. Uh, actually, Digital Main Street is a not-for-profit organization that kind of helps out uh, Main street businesses like you know small retails, restaurants, bars, uh, gyms, etc., et uh, get online uh, and equip them with a good website and e-commerce tools. Uh, this organization existed long before the pandemic, but only uh, during the pandemic uh, the government paid true due attention uh, and they provided them with some funding uh, up to ten thousand uh, dollars to help um, uh, businesses get online if they're not online or uh, adopt some kind of e-commerce tools. Uh, this program will be continued through the next fiscal year, so uh, you're welcome to apply. But again, you have to be a Main Street uh, business. Uh, let's talk about the regional development funds. Uh, there are uh, three uh, large regional development grants in Ontario. That means uh, the government funding programs, uh, government grants that help uh, businesses outside Greater Toronto Area to expand. Uh, those programs that you see um, here on the screen, they existed uh, before. And uh, the good thing about uh, this budget is that uh, the budget actually didn't touch them. So they will still be available during this fiscal year. Uh, if your business located is located in Ontario, but outside uh, of the Greater Toronto Area, and if you are expanding, no matter what's going on in the economy, but if you're still, your expansion plan is still going on, uh, you can tap into one of those programs. Uh, and in terms of the maximum amounts, uh, you can get either up to 600,000 in grants uh, or up to 1.5 million in interest-free loans. So it's pretty significant uh, benefit for the, uh, for, the, for the companies to expand in the province. Uh, by the way, you don't have to be in Ontario to expand. Uh, if you are, say, moving your company from another province or even uh, you represent a foreign entity that wants to you know, invest in Ontario and open the facility there, uh, you also qualify. So you don't have to be you know, existing operation in Ontario. Now, uh, what's new? Uh, the new? The new update uh, uh, is about the Regional Opportunities invest Investment Tax Credit. Uh, this tax credit uh, uh, existed before the pandemic, um, so nothing new here, but uh, if you ex are expanding in uh, the same areas, which is Western, Eastern, and Northern Ontario, um, and you, for some reason, don't qualify for these programs, uh, the above programs, uh, or you chose not to apply, uh, you, still, um, you still qualify for the reimbursement of um, up to 20% of your eligible expenses, which are the construction expenses, uh, you know, leasehold improvement and uh, purchasing new equipment. However, before, uh, before this budget, uh, this was not 20%, but 10%, and the maximum amount was 50,000. Now the amount is topped up a little bit, and the maximum amount is now, maximum amount is now 90,000. So something, something to think about. Um, also, um, to qualify for one of these funds, you have to be either a technology or manufacturing company. Uh, if you, for example, expanded your uh, warehouse, um, you wouldn't qualify for one of these development funds anyway, but you qualified for regional opportunities investment tax credit. So uh, it's a good opportunity for you in case if you don't qualify or if you find you know, the application process uh, a little bit tricky, because it is tricky. Uh, Ontario Automotive Modernization Program. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because of uh, because this company, uh, sorry, this grant was mentioned in the budget. It's the grant that helps uh, Ontario automotive 
uh, manufacturers uh, uh, to uh, either do the lean uh, training, improve their lean skills of employees, or adopt hardware and software. This program was mentioned in the budget. It also, there was a, a record uh, that this program still has $1.2 million available in the budget. Uh, that means uh, it will potentially, can ha potentially help uh, 120 more uh, provincial uh, also Ontario based uh, uh, automotive companies to uh, succeed in hardware software projects. Uh, but unfortunately, there was no intake date uh, scheduled in the budget. Uh, the program program's webpage still says that uh, there will be some uh, funding in spring, but uh, well, the spring is almost almost there. Unfortunately, there was no date. Anyways, uh, I, I'm here to tell you that uh, if you are uh, the automotive industry supplier in Ontario, keep 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 keep, in, keep the program in mind. Follow the program. Um, APMA, which is uh, Automotive Parts uh, Association, uh, also has this uh, program uh, on their radar. So they will be uh, announcing as soon as there's new money available in the program. Now, uh, this is this program and the other one that I wanted to show you is uh, not necessarily not only for Ontario. So we are uh, switching gears a little bit and we are going uh, on the federal level. Canada Job Grant uh, represents a program that is funded both federally and provincially. Now, uh, there was nothing about those programs <laughs> in, in, neither in the federal budget nor in the provincial budget across Canada. However, uh, we know from the experience that the intake, intake continues. That means to me, that tells me that, uh, yes, even though they weren't mentioned in the budget, uh, or uh, none of the budgets uh, across the country, they're still, they still, uh, this program, these programs are still available across the country. And uh, this program is pretty flexible. Uh, and the government doesn't dictate you what kind of training you should take and who should take the training. There are some exceptions for the owners of the company, but if you have employees uh, and you wanted to get them through the corporate training in pretty much anything, right, from, you know, basically literacy and numeracy to, uh, you know, communication, marketing, and sales skills, and everything in between. Uh, you can get, um, in most of the case, you get between 50 to 83% of the training expenses, up to a maximum of $10,000. But if you hire a person, the unemployed person, pay for the training of that person, then you get 100% of the training costs reimbursed and up to a maximum of $15,000. Again, this program exists everywhere in Canada. In some provinces, uh, some provinces chose different names, but overall, you know, the funding mechanism and the key principles uh, are the same. Uh, same, so same story is with Canadian Agricultural Partnership Program. Uh, if you are in agriculture, food, or business anywhere in the country, uh, you have uh, opportunity to apply for uh, Canadian Agricultural Partnership Program. Uh, this program is again jointly funded by uh, the federal and provincial governments. Uh, however, certain intake dates vary uh, from province to province or from or, or the territory. Uh, here on this slide, I'm highlighting uh, certain eligible costs related to software and hardware. However, uh, this program is very broad um, and it covers lots of different areas and potential projects. Uh, so, long story short, uh, if uh, if the, the, if you are on this call, uh, or if you are watching this this recording of this webinar, if you are in agriculture, food, or beverage business, uh, there's a lot for you. Uh, it's just a matter of your needs and uh, the intake dates that again vary from province to province. So now let's uh, go through the federal budget highlights and updates. Uh, and those uh, who are not uh, who are not from Ontario on this call, uh, now you can uh, pay full attention to what's what, what I'm what I'm telling. Um, I'm going to start with good news uh, and announcements of new programs. Uh, some of these programs are badly needed and they are, uh, the, the, the industry was waiting for those programs uh, quite a lot. Uh, Canada Digital Adoption Program is the one uh, that is here to help uh, Canadian companies coast to coast, select the right technology solutions and get the funding to implement those solutions successfully. 
uh, now, of course, uh, the budget doesn't specify the, the program, what kind of digital solutions they're looking for. But my gut feeling based on the experience that uh, most likely the government will not dictate what kind of digital solutions uh, you are uh, to adopt. Uh, most likely it will be up to, up to you, up to your business. Uh, it could include ERP systems, it could include the CRM systems, it could include industry 4.0 tools, uh, you know, machine learning and whatever, whatever the case may be. I think it will be pretty broad uh, definition of what exactly you uh, can, you know, adopt as part of this program. Uh, however, what we know already from the budget is that uh, this program will have a grant for selection of the technology and assessment of your needs. Uh, because the good practice uh, is, of course, to before implement, implementing new technologies to understand what kind of technology you need and what uh, sort of benefits you'll have. So there will be grants for technology assessment and selection, but as far as the acquisition of technology, there will be uh, interest-free loans, repayable loans, interest-free loans. Uh, the budget specifies that Business Development Bank of Canada, BDC, will be uh, the funding organization for this program. Uh, obviously, uh, the budget was just, you know, tabled last week, so uh, there's no further information, but that information will be coming uh, over the next few months. Uh, another good news uh, for those on the call who, uh, who is an uh, aerospace supplier, uh, there is allocated uh, 250 million in the federal budget uh, for aerospace industry coast to coast. Uh, the regional development agencies, which we'll talk about later on during the presentation, they are uh, assigned the task to develop the new program, uh, assuming the regional needs of the aerospace industry suppliers. Uh, but what we know from the budget is that this program will provide support to the small to medium sized um, aerospace uh, manufacturers and other you know, service kind of service suppliers uh, in the efforts to improve their productivity, commercialize the technology or green their operations and products. I mean, I'm giving you the exact quote uh, from the budget, greening their operations and products. So when I, when I read it in the first place, I kind of... Uh, Remember this one, it's like a Siberian Airlines uh, that, uh, that, that uses green color uh, on their airplanes. But anyways, um, let's get serious. Uh, th there are other uh, programs and uh, there were other programs announced in the federal budget, uh, lots of new programs, uh, but just for the sake of time, uh, I picked uh, the two that, uh, two new programs that are either for everyone uh, all sorts of industries or those industries that, you know, I know we have participants from. Uh, however, uh, there are also uh, the funds uh, and programs, federal programs that existed before this budget, uh, and you should tap into them if you have, that, if you have a project. And uh, most of those programs either got the renewal of the funding or they got top-ups. I'll tell you more about that. A uh, good example is IRAP program, Industrial Research Assistance Program. Uh, it's the popular research and development grant. Uh, in the past few years, there was a problem with this um, uh, research and development grant uh, uh, that there were so many applicants that uh, you know the, the, the National Research Council that runs this program, they had to make tough choices uh, and you know, create, they had to create long lineups. You have to, we had to wait a year, two years sometimes to get your, your fair share. Uh, the federal government topped up this program quite significantly. So uh, hopefully starting this fiscal year, this lineup will disappear uh, because uh, if I remember correctly, the budget said uh, that uh, on, top of, on top of the number of businesses this program currently funds, they will look for funding additional 2,900 businesses across Canada uh, every fiscal year. So it's quite a significant top up. Um, SRND tax credit is another popular uh, research and development program, probably by far probably the largest, uh, you know, the, the, the largest R&D funding programs for businesses. Uh, most of you know this program, but if, 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 if you don't, um, it's the uh, program that you file when your fiscal year ends and you claim uh, the previous, the uh, research and development expenses that you've incurred in the previous year. Uh, so depending on your province, you can get up to 60% of the labor cost and 40% of material cost. There were no changes uh, in this program 
according to the federal budget, which is a good thing. Um, I mean, I guess nobody wants to uh, change that program. Uh, if you do, <laughs> chat me and we'll, we'll have a separate discussion about that. Uh, can export is another federal grant uh, that again you can use anywhere in Canada. Uh, your location doesn't matter. Uh, this program uh, helps Acadian companies to uh, market uh, their products and services outside Canada. And again, the government doesn't dictate you what market you should choose. It has to be the new market for you, though. So, uh, for example, if you have uh, you know, significant sales. Uh, let's say in the United Kingdom, uh, you cannot use this program, but you have to pick another market um, and use this funds for marketing your company um, you know, outside your markets, uh, outside your traditional export markets. Uh, by the way, uh, for the purpose of this program, the United States is divided uh, into four, I believe four regional markets. Uh, and if you, for example, have uh, lots of business in the state of New York, but you want to uh, start promoting your company in the state of California, you can still apply for this program because uh, for the purpose of this program, you know, California is the Western US, is a new region, uh, new market for you, even though you already have you know, every, every, uh, everyone in the state of New York. Now, uh, just a nuance of this program is, is tradi was traditionally used for uh, travel and trade shows. Obviously, we are in a different reality here. Uh, there are no trade shows and missions anymore, but there are still online trade missions and trade shows. So uh, the expenses of your participation in those events are eligible. But on top of that, all kinds of online advertising, social media, you know, pay-per-click, uh, you know, advertising on Amazon, uh, other platforms uh, is qualified now. So instead of um, uh, using your using traditional marketing, you can go with uh, digital marketing and uh, market your company in the foreign market. And the, uh, and the program will provide 75% of the project costs up to $75,000. Uh, hiring grants, um, again, uh, there are lots of different hiring grants available. Uh, just keep in mind that most of them are for hiring people under 30 years old. Uh, all the fund, all the hiring grants were, to, were, were re renewed. So if you are uh, about to hire a person for some kind of co-op work uh, during the summer months, uh, or uh, if you're looking for a more permanent uh, position uh, and you are ready to hire a graduate, uh, most likely there is appropriate program, appropriate hiring grant. Uh, hiring grants aren't um, uh, on the kind of uh, they, they're not reimbursing a lot. Uh, typically, you get like five thousand, seven thousand. Uh, per placement, uh, but you know it's still it's still good depending on uh, your situation. So I'm not discouraging you. Uh, the 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 challenge is that there are just a lot of them, a lot of them, and it's it's quite difficult to figure which particular grant hiring grant is is the right for you. But other than that, still good opportunity. And now let's switch to the federal uh, regional development funds, uh, similarly to you know, local funds in Ontario. The federal government uh, targets uh, certain regions in Canada uh, with the regional development programs, sorry, regional development agencies. Those agencies exist everywhere in Canada, and you can see uh, from the list uh, there's a dedicated agency for Atlantic Canada, for Quebec. Uh, there are two agencies for Ontario, one for South and one for Northern Ontario. There is a Western Economic Diversification agency that covers, uh, right now they cover uh, prairies and British Columbia. And we have Canadian Northern uh, Economic Development Agency that covers uh, Northern Territories. However, the new uh, in this federal budget is that uh, the federal government will be establishing a regional development agency for British Columbia. And the Western Economic Diversification Agency will still be there, but it will focus on Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Whereas uh, you know the dedicated BC agency will focus on uh, you know different regions of the British Columbia. Uh, on top, oh by the way, there's no uh, timeline for this yet. Uh, if you are uh, listening uh, this webinar from BC, uh, there's no timeline yet for the development of the agency. But I think it will take time, you know, because it's a lot of administrative work, you know. Uh, 
how looking for you know, hiring people, you know, developing strategies, regional strategies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, I think it will probably start in six months or eight months or maybe even next fiscal year. Uh, but anyways, in the meantime, uh, the BC is covered by the Western Economic Diversification Agency. So those agencies, uh, uh, I'll give them long introductions, but those agencies uh, typically provide uh, large scale loans, interest-free loans for uh, large scale expansion in those regions that they cover. Uh, so if you are planning an expansion there, uh, you should talk to one of those agencies and they will give you the right uh, information what sort of funds are available. Uh, on top of that, uh, the budget uh, promised to continue super cluster funding. Uh, it's again, it's a national super cluster funding program, uh, depending on your industry you can tap into. Uh, that program though requires collaboration with other industry partners which sometimes is not possible. Uh, also, the federal budget committed to uh, renewing Strategic Innovation Fund, and in fact, uh, they are topping it up. Uh, strategic Innovation Fund is the federal program for like super large scale expansion programs and bringing foreign direct investments that, but to qualify for this program, the minimum investments that you need to make is 40 million over the course of course of three, four years. Uh, but still, it's a significant uh, threshold uh, that uh, uh, you, know, you, you, you can still tap into if this is your scale. <clears throat> um, other than that, forestry industry also gets uh, its own expansion program with forestry industry transformation program. Uh, there will be some money available for uh, forest industry and forest product industries to expand. You know, hopefully, it will help to uh, cut down the prices of uh, construction materials, but we'll see. Uh, in terms of amounts, typically between 15 and 50 percent of the project expenses. In most, in most cases, regional development funding agencies they provide interest-free loans, not grants. Uh, now, quickly, let's talk about uh, the temporary COVID-related subsidies. Uh, most of most of um, uh, the folks on the call, most likely you are aware of those programs, such as the rent subsidy, emergency wage subsidy, um, as well as regional relief and, relief and recovery fund. Uh, those programs have been extended. The deadline the, the deadlines have been extended. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what will happen. Well, if the vaccinations um, uh, continue. Um, and uh, you know, COVID cases will go down, then most likely these programs will end in September. Uh, but if not, uh, they, they, they may be continued. They may be continued because uh, there were already two or, three, two or three extensions over the past uh, year. So I, I don't exclude another extension. Uh, new, something new as well, Canada Recovery Hiring Program. Uh, the purpose of this program uh, will be to augment and eventually replace the emergency wage subsidy when that program will complete in September. Uh, it will be available for, for application from uh, June 6 to November 20th, 2021. Um, there are some rules uh, already specified uh, in the budget, uh, but again, very briefly, so I, I didn't want to bring, bring up those rules just yet because um, I think that they will be changed. And uh, I'd rather um, let everybody know when this happens. Um, another interesting program uh, that uh, is not a grant per se, or is not an interest-free loan, uh, but actually is the uh, interest-based uh, loan uh, provided by the uh, financial institutions in Canada, like your regular banks and credit unions. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this program uh, has the government guarantee in it. Although it's a loan, it's a commercial loan, you pay interest, but 85% um, of the loan amount is guaranteed by the government. This program existed before, um, and uh, primarily it was used uh, to purchase um, land or buildings, uh, purchase the equipment, uh, or uh, do, this, do, some, do, do the leasehold improvements uh, in your existing uh, facility or new facility. Uh, however, the maximum limit uh, of the funding you can spend on equipment was $350,000. Starting this fiscal year, this amount is extended to $500,000 for equipment alone, and the maximum amount of loan is still $1 million. 
because we assume and government assumes that you will spend some money for equipment, uh, but also some money for, for the building. Now, uh, let me ask you a good question. What about equipment funding? Uh, especially if uh, you represent manufacturing uh, business uh, on this call or uh, when you will be watching the recording of the webinar, this question, this is a question that you probably asked uh, uh, yourself a lot. Um, there were uh, government grants for equipment here and there uh, across the country. Uh, there used to be one in Ontario, there used to be one in Quebec. Uh, right now there's one uh, in British Columbia with a deadline of uh, May 31st. But there was, not, there was never an, like, in the countrywide uh, federally funded program uh, that, will help, that would help manufacturers uh, to um, uh, upgrade their equipment, purchase the state of the art equipment. Uh, I was hoping uh, when I read the federal budget uh, that I would see something like this, uh, because I know that some other uh, G7 countries uh, used uh, used COVID uh, uh, as the uh, excuse to provide the government grants to their manufacturers. I know Italy did that. Uh, so Italy launched the federal, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's not federal anyway. So Italy launched its own program to fund equipment upgrades and provided grants to local manufacturers. I was hoping to see something like this. I have not seen anything like this. So uh, there might be still regional uh, opportunities here and there in the country. However, yesterday, I had a chance to uh, ask this question um, uh, to the Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters Association. And uh, this is an approximate quote, <laughs> the approximate answer that I received. Uh, they are talking to the government, and I was told that they were uh, talking to the government every week uh, to highlight the importance of uh, national funding for equipment upgrade. Uh, there used to be a smart program uh, that CME, Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters, ran successfully. Uh, however, uh, the program is out of funding, and uh, we are looking forward to tearing back. Uh, hopefully, CME, uh, which is a powerful organization in Canada, hopefully CME will be uh, successful in lobbying this type of grant uh, because it's actually needed. Uh, it's been a while since this since since this grant existed, uh, and everybody's looking forward to it. So uh, we also look forward to it. Uh, in the meantime, we're getting close to the end of our presentation. Um, uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, a book, Get Funded, uh, uh, that we also have, and that if you are interested in um, a strategic approach to the government funding your organization. Uh, in a way, almost you're welcome to order this book right now uh, on our website at fgwinc.ca slash get funded. Um, it's not a list of the grants uh, or loans because uh, the, the programs come and go. Uh, it's a strategic book about how to determine your funding needs and how to select the best program. Uh, and also has tips from the writers and funders um, how to uh, make your application successful. And with that being said, uh, I'm happy to open the floor uh, to questions and answers. Uh, I, I saw uh, the questions were coming up uh, uh, through the chat, so thank you very much for those who asked these questions. Um, and uh, I will turn over to Colin to go through the questions and ask those. Um, and before that, uh, just final note, um, we have an eligibility uh, check on our website. Uh, which is free. Uh, I encourage you to go uh, on our website at fgwinc.ca slash eligibility and fill it out. Uh, your uh, submission will help us to determine your needs better. And uh, uh, in two days, we'll get back to you with a list of the specific programs that your business is eligible for. Over to you, Colin. Okay, thank you, Igor. That was a very informative presentation. Um, I think there was a little bit for pretty much everyone in there um, across all sorts of industries and, of course, all across Canada. I'm going to jump straight into the questions. The first question I have is from Tina. Tina is asking, I understand that if you get the 20 plus 20K from the Ontario government, that you cannot apply for the hospitality grant as well. Is this true? 
and she is referring to a, a, a cafe and catering company. So I think this issue is really about um, stacking of grants, which is an interesting topic. Yeah, interesting question. Uh, interesting question, Tim. Thanks for that. Uh, let's wait until we see the rules, but uh, just, you know, thinking about the situation, uh, the first one, which is Ontario Small Business Support Grant. This grant uh, was launched, uh, I believe, last December or November, and it was for many industries, not just for hospitality industries. Uh, however, uh, the issues in, in some industries persist, and my uh, my take on it is that the purpose of the tour, uh, the tourism and hospitality grant, is not to replace the previous program is to augment and top up the amount of funding. So my best guess is that uh, uh, even if you qualified and you've got the 20,000 from the previous program, you'd still be eligible. Uh, but let's wait for the, for the moment when we see the, all, all the rules and all the fine print um, and we'll have more uh, accurate answer then. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know the issue of stacking is quite popular among our clients and um, it does, it, it is an intricate area and you have to approach it with a bit of forethought and planning. The next question comes from Summit. Summit is asking, can you claim a tax credit for implementing a new software to manage your human resources more efficiently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, right now, uh, the answer is no. There's no dedicated tax credit for, uh, in, for, for implementing software. Uh, and especially if you already incur the expenses or you are, you are doing this project right now, um, I'd say there probably wouldn't be anything available at the moment. Uh, but if it's something that uh, uh, Sumit, you are planning for the future, then uh, if you can wait for a couple of months until that new... Uh, Canada Digital Adoption Program kicks in. Uh, if that's if that's fine with you, uh, then you will be able to use at least uh, you know a combination of a grant and the interest-free loan for software implementation. Mm -hmm. That includes this child, to me. Right, and as you as I heard that, it also occurred to me that one of the strategies that we sometimes suggest to people is that when you're looking to do a, a when you're seeking a grant application, one of the things that you can consider is that while one project that your core project might not be eligible for a grant, there might be other projects you're doing in expanding your business that could be eligible for a grant, which would allow you to, um, I think the word the accountants use is VIRE, V-I-R-E, would allow you to VIRE funds from one project to another and secure grant funding. The next question is really a comment coming from David, is that there are many new technologies that will lower energy use and also lower GHG that are now going to be taxed. Um, can you confirm this, Igor? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, uh, if, if my memory serves me well, uh, there will be a tax incentives. There will be tax incentives for those companies that produce uh, greenhouse, all, all kinds of green technologies, such as you know batteries, uh, solar panels, and whatnot. So there's a whole list of uh, uh, products and industries in the budget. Uh, the budget, federal budget, promises to cut a corporate tax rate for those companies uh, to stimulate uh, their development. Uh, and furthermore, uh, furthermore, uh, the federal government introduces so-called immediate expensing of uh, green technologies. Again, there's also a list of those technologies and uh, David, just shoot us an email and I can send you the right, you know, the, 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 the list from the budget, the I can extract it from the budget for you. But there's a specific list of um, uh, technologies that if you, if you are a client of the, if you're buying one of those technologies, let's say energy storage, for example. I, I don't remember if that's the case, but let's just say energy, energy storage. Uh, you can immediately write off the cost of energy storage in, the, in your fiscal year. Because normally what you do, you amortize the cost of equipment, including this energy, you know, energy efficiency equipment. Uh, that means you pay a little, uh, you write off 
the expenses just a little bit over the next five, 10 years or 15 years. Uh, what the new rules allow you to do is to write it off right away and not to worry about them any longer. Okay, thank you, Igor. The next question again is from David. Again, um, David is asking if the SDTC program is still available, the Sustainable Development Technology Canada mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. want to, mm -hmm. Igor? Uh, yes, yes, the short answer is yes, and thanks for bringing it up, David. Mm -hmm. uh, just for everyone's sake, uh, uh, Sustainable Development Technology uh, funding uh, program is uh, here is available for uh, to support uh, the late stage commercialization of clean technologies uh, made in Canada, uh, and uh, they provide 33% uh, of the uh, commercialization expenses up to a maximum of a million dollars. So yes, this program was mentioned in the budget. It will continue, and it even got a little bit more money. Cool. All right, um, moving on, the next question comes from Mimi. Mimi is asking, is the rent subsidy only for business or for individuals too? Uh, good, good question. I guess she means uh, self-employed. Yes, uh, yes, if you mean uh, self-employed, then yes, uh, this rent subsidy is also, for, is also available for the self-employed individuals. Uh, but then you have to look at the fine print uh, because what happens in most cases, uh, like right now I work from home um, and I write off some of the home expenses, right? With, uh, as I don't have a dedicated office at the moment. Uh, if you are self-employed and you are, you know, renting your home, you're paying the rent to, to, to yourself as an individual, uh, or maybe if even if you are incorporated, but let's say your corporation is yourself and uh, you pay the rent to you as an individual, for uh, you know, X uh, square feet of the office space in the in your house. Uh, unfortunately, this scenario will not qualify. Uh, the government uh, specifically mandates that the landlord and the tenant to be non-affiliated. So, so if that's the case, uh, let's say if you are, uh, for example, an accountant, right? you're a sole proprietor and you still have an office elsewhere. Yes, this is qualified. But if uh, you are kind of renting from yourself, unfortunately, it's not eligible. Okay. I think that actually leads us very directly into our next question, which comes from Bora. Um, Bora asks, can you apply for the rent subsidy for your operating company if your holding company owns the building? Uh, sadly, I have to I have to start to tell you that, no, unfortunately, Bora, that's not, eligible uh, because you know, basically you can negotiate the better rent with yourself so with your with your holding company so no I, it's, it's a very common scenario that uh, the building uh, uh, the building is owned by the holding company or the affiliated company but if it's still your ownership or your close family members are co-owners of the holding company unfortunately it's still considered to be you know affiliated entities for the purpose of the program mm -hmm. But wouldn't the holding company um, be able to to apply? That's uh, no, my question. No, 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 no. Just the, the, the hold. No, the, for, first of all, the holding company cannot apply because the holding company does not pay the rent. Only if you pay the rent, those who yes, pay. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. So in this case, the holding company is your landlord, and your operating company is your uh, tenant, right? In this case, but again, the ownership is. Uh, uh, there's shared ownership, so unfortunately, it, it would be possible. Okay. All right. Um, David asks, what about accelerated depreciation for clean energy equipment? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's exactly what I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, it's not, not just accelerated. It's, it's now immediate. It used to be accelerated, uh, but now it's immediate. So you, you, you write off uh, the expenses for this clean tech equipment, uh in 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 like right away in in whatever fiscal year you purchased purchased okay wonderful all right um holly asks um my company leased a warehouse in january and are now renovating it and um, buying equipment to expand production or production facility is funding available for projects that have already started and they're located up in barry 
And Barry, okay, that's a very good, uh, uh, that's a very good holy that you mentioned that, uh, because uh, depending on the location within Ontario, uh, if you have not applied for any grants uh, before you started the renovation and equipment purchasing, uh, you can still apply for the um, Ontario Ontario Regional Opportunities Tax Credit. Uh, and get uh, now now we can get twenty percent of twenty uh, percent of uh, the expenses up to ninety k. So yes, you can uh, you can apply for for the for the regional tax credit. Uh, then my next question to you uh, that we can probably talk about it later on, but uh, uh, you need to know what your fiscal year end is because you apply for the tax credit when your fiscal year ends, and then look at. Uh, Look at where. Oh, I see December 31st. So yes, uh, in this case, uh, you can apply for all the expenses that you've incurred up to December 31st in the past fiscal year, which is your calendar year as well, which is a calendar year as well for you. So all the 2020 expenses will be uh, will be eligible, and your 2021 expenses uh, you have to claim next next year. Okay, thank you, Igor. Um, and from the Q&A section of um, Zoom, um, Sue asks, is there anything for small home-based businesses? Uh, there is, there's always a, a, anything, but uh, uh, not a lot. Uh, I'll be straight with you. Um, however, depending on uh, the nature of the business uh, and what you try to achieve, uh, there might be something. Um, I gave an example of a home-based accountant Right. If you are, let's say, home-based accountant or I don't know, fitness trainer, uh, and your revenues, uh, and your revenues, uh, uh, you know, declined due to COVID, then of course uh, you can qualify for the for the for the, for the wage subsidy. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, I'd say it's hard to it's hard to now you know advise just in general you know without knowing the context. So uh, if you get to our eligibility check form and fill it out. Uh, and give us the context of uh, you know, what sort of business you are in, uh, and what you are trying to achieve, what you need the money for. Um, then we may be in a better position to 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 guide you. Um, and Fernando asks, "Hi Igor, are there grants specifically for startups, um, both provincial in Ontario and federal?" Mm -hmm. uh, Fernando, thanks for a question. Uh, there is funding for startup is a tricky, uh, tricky one uh, because we have to uh, we have to understand what the government is looking for. It, when the government provides uh, the grants, they are basically investing taxpayers' money into uh, pub, into private into the private companies uh, without taking share of ownership. When the government is facing the issue of um, potentially funding a startup. Uh, that has no track record. Uh, for the government, it's very difficult to prove the uh, feasibility of investing uh, into such entities. So instead of uh, some kind of large scale uh, uh, grants for startups, uh, what, what, what's available, uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, kind of pitch, uh, pitch competitions uh, from the accelerators across Canada, uh, and also some startup funds, seed funds that typically range between 20, 30,000, sometimes 50,000. Uh, we don't specialize in those programs, uh, because, you know, they are more like pitch competitions versus grants. However, uh, we also need to, uh, when it comes to startups, like there are different phases of starting up. Uh, when you when you when you're a pure startup and you just have a rough idea of the technology, there is very little opportunities for you. However, if you are already a couple of years in in the business, and your startup may not necessarily generate the revenue, but if you have let's say secured some kind of angel funding or venture capital funding, if you have cash for operations, and if you are incurring the expenses for research and development, even though you don't make money you're losing money technically, you still qualify for R&D tax credit. So uh, I'd say, Fernando, depending on the phase of the development, like the more, the more developed your startup is, the more money it can get. And also, also you can get IRAP, which is Industrial Research Assistance Program, a grant for research and development. I mentioned the tax credit. Uh, I mentioned 
I didn't mention, but you can also get the funding for training people. Uh, we had a mobile technology startup uh, that um, needed some money for uh, programming training for their developers. So no, that's, th th those, those types of programs are possible, but you know, overall, for most, mostly, most, mostly the startups are looking for money when uh, they are on the idea, a very rough idea stage. It, in, in this case, it's it's very challenging to 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 find the government funds. Okay, thanks, Igor. Um, we have two. We are pretty much at the end of time now. We are at um, we're at one o'clock, um, but we did start a couple of minutes after the hour, so I guess we can get in two more questions. Okay. Um, the first of those is: Can I get the rent subsidy for a new small business? Um, and it appears that, um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but I'll break it into two parts. Um, can I get the rent subsidy for a new small business? So if you, Igor, if you could start off with that. The, 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 the short answer is no, because uh, to qualify for the rent subsidy, you have to demonstrate the uh, you know, reduction of the revenue uh, compared to last year, to, to the similar periods of last year. If your business did not exist last year, then you have no you have nothing to compare it with. Mm -hmm. And I think you had addressed earlier the possibility of um, work from home startups um, getting basically subsidies or grants for seed funding for those types of businesses. Um, I have another question here um, for a new custom food box um, company operating from home, is there any funding for that kind of business? And I'd like you to address that from two perspectives, Igor. Um, could you address it from the idea of, of perhaps making custom boxes that caterers would use to ship out their food? And could you also address it from the perspective of someone who is a caterer doing um, um, starting up their operation and selling food from home? And the, the, and ladies and gentlemen, after Igor answers that question, I will take one more question, which I have in the chat, and then we will wrap up. So, Igor. Uh, well, uh, the, the short answer is that uh, it, it's, it's a little bit difficult, uh, just, because, uh, just because every program has the eligibility rules. Uh, I haven't uh, spe specified uh, all those details and rules. Um, uh, in the presentation because it will be a long time. Um, but typically it's very difficult to get uh, the government funding if you are you know sole operation uh, or you know home-based sole operation just because uh, again the government when the government invests taxpayers money, they want to make sure that um, there will be uh, that there will be a, a return on this investment. Uh, so that's why it's very hard for like uh, solo preneurs uh, to get to get the file, I'll be honest with you, and be it character or be it uh, uh, someone who makes uh, makes the, um, uh, the, the, the the products for caterers, uh, it'll be challenging, I'll be honest with you. Okay, the questions are still pouring in, but I did say one more. Um, so I would say the last question, um, would be from Sue. Um, she's asking, if I'm renting space for retail, can I qualify for the rent subsidy? Uh, yes, absolutely. If your revenue dropped uh, compared to, to the last year, then yeah, that's absolutely. Okay. All right. Sorry, Igor, I cut you off. No, no I'm just, uh, any more questions before we wrap up? Uh, you want to do one last one? Let's do just one and then, because yeah, I have okay. to jump. Cool. All right. This is definitely going to be the last one. This comes from Bora. Is there still accelerated CCA for manufacturing companies on real estate investments that was announced in the 2018 federal budget? Uh, yes, I think uh, I think I saw this in the budget as well. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still applicable. Okay. All right. Good. So yeah, and. Remarks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with that, um, I have to say thank you to you, Igor. This has been a great presentation. I think that we've all benefited um, greatly from it. And I have to say a very, very special thanks to 
our audience today. Um, this has been, we've had a really large turnout and we've had a lot of very good and enthusiastic questions. Um, if you have more questions, please, um, you see our contact information on the screen, please reach out to us. Um, you're, there's phone, there's email, some, quite a few of you have our emails, so please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be very happy to um, answer your questions. And as I am often, used to getting myself in trouble by saying, please ask us the hard questions. Those are the ones we like the most. Um, so with that, I say to you all, thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Cole, and thanks everyone who participated today.